I think it looks good. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm going to take a deep breath. You can take one with me because it's been a hell of a week for me and a hell of a day. And I know Wendy's been busy too. So I'm going to say welcome to everyone to Weekend Wind Down with Business Coach Nancy. You know me, I'm Nancy G. And that's Wendy W. We decided not to even say our last names because no one can ever say them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so as people come on, let me know where you're watching from. Cheers, Wendy. Welcome to Weekend Wind Down. Cheers. So Facebook is doing a really weird thing. Yes. After I post an event, well, there's a couple of things. After I post an event, normally I can go in and share it with 250 people one week. And they give me like a list. People who have previously watched Weekend Wind Downs, people in my group, the Interior Design Business Farm, and I can select and I can select people. Last week, they didn't show me anyone. They just said, invite friends. And if I hit all 250, it invited like a lot of personal friends that I wouldn't have wanted to invite to this. Really? So I thought, oh, maybe it's a Facebook glitch. Today, the same thing. So I didn't get to like do the full like invite like I usually do, which disturbed me greatly. Um, but oh, hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Adam's here from Australia. <laughs> um, and then what do you think before we get rolling on the topic of how you've grown your business yep. and all the new things you're up to? Mm -hmm. What do you think of Instagram no longer showing how many likes on the photos? Did you notice that? I I have not been on Instagram today. That's bad. But <laughs> well, you've been driving. That's how everyone works. Yeah, I've been on the road. But I'm looking at it now. It doesn't show any likes for everybody or just for some people? Everybody. That, it, that's, that's awesome. I think it's awesome, too, because, like, you no longer, like, get hung up on, like, oh, only 12 people liked it. And the next time. It doesn't it's, matter. It doesn't matter. And I actually think, and someone said this to me, me today, so I'm repeating somebody who I can't remember. Um, that it's probably going to make Instagram a lot more fun and really start people going to be not just looking for the likes, but just like enjoying the content. Just share. Just share. share chat with people, be social, and not try to get all the likes. It doesn't, to me, social media, it doesn't matter the likes. It matters, I always say this, about the quality of followers, not the quantity. It doesn't really matter. It's true. It's true. And in the beginning, when I first started, this is true confessions. When I first started four years ago, I did one of those like buy likes. Yep. I remember you saying that. Right. I think I did say it once before. And, you know, I got all crap and then they quickly, un, you know, unliked me right. over, over time. So about a month ago, I dropped 400 followers in one night or oh, two nights. Yep. And I, it was because Instagram's cleaning up the fake profiles. When you have real profiles following you anyway. <laughs> I do have, I do. I'm, I'm over 6,000, so I wasn't devastated. Yeah, but I, you're good. But, and it's, it's still growing, but like, you know, sometimes I get likes, sometimes I don't. So I love the fact that they're not showing likes anymore. It's awesome. Good. Yeah. I'll look at that after. Yeah. So everyone, as you come on, say hi to us. Tell us where you're watching from. Hello, Stephanie. I haven't done this on Be Live with another person. I've only done it with sharing pictures. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and I keep toying with going back to Zoom for this, but I like that I can choose my branding colors with our names and you can, here we go, we can change the screen to like this, we can do like this. It doesn't change for me. Oh, you're, you're still, okay, well you're getting big and then small and then just keep small. Just here, and then I like it where it's more like wide with your name underneath. And for my last name, I need the wide, otherwise yeah. it, it cuts I hear it you. Off. I hear so, you. <laughs> so, all right, Wendy. You, when I tell you almost every other day when I get consults, it's because you have so graciously put my name out there often. And, oh, okay. and, and they'll say to me, I like Wendy's website. Like, I like her packages. Oh, and, and I need to, you know, get my packages straight. And they always take me to your website, which I know because we worked on, right? you know, the descriptions a little bit together. Yep. Um, so you started with me. We looked it up, everybody. You started with me in April. Yep. And you ended with me six months later. You did one month of my post-client group or two weeks of my post-client yep. group. Yep. Tell everyone what happened in that six months. 
oh my god i don't know if i can fit that in an hour but <laughs> only, the, only the highlights i can tell you because i looked up my numbers and i was talking to you before that my numbers tripled so i know i'm looking at my profit and loss statements and my numbers tripled after working with you look at Dolly. she's being dirty look at her she said package <laughs> I don't. He's a twelve-year-old at heart. That's right. <laughs> um, so your gross income tripled. Yep. yep. So what do you? So my profit tripled as well. Oh yay! Yeah. Okay. Looking at my numbers, sorry, but yeah, because I upped. Well, like you always tell everybody, I upped my hourly rate. I upped my consultation rate, and I also have probably twice as many clients. So. I can't take any credit for you twice as many clients because you do a phenomenal job of putting yourself out there on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank right. you. But I was, when I first started working with you, I was like a chicken with my head cut off. <laughs> like just running around frantic, exhausted, working seven days a week, tired and just feeling like I was running, running, running and not really getting anywhere. So I wasn't making the amount of money I should be making for the hours I was working. So that's, that's most people. Right. And it's crazy. It I is crazy. I don't want to live like that. <laughs> no, and nobody should live like that. I think we all start out that way. I started out that way. That's how I know how to coach people because that's what I was doing. I was working crazy 60 hours a week for $60. Like, and I was like, oh, this is good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm happy, really. <laughs> And I was like, I'm really not happy. I want to like figure out how to get it to the next level. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's the thing. Even now it's November. I am working now. I think I told you before. Yeah. I now have an integrator, which is a strategist and a business manager to, to so I can focus on what I do best, which is coaching people and doing my webinars and lives and speaking stuff. But Now's the time, everyone. If you're not looking at your 2020 plan, you're going to be in 2020, February, March going, I don't know what's supposed to be, you know, what I'm supposed to be focusing on. And I'm just doing the same thing. Um, okay. So we yeah, have, we got questions. Sharon, Otto, what are some of the tactics that Wendy uses for putting herself out there? Oh, I can answer that. You know, my answer to that is Facebook, Facebook all day long. <laughs> I know that other people like Instagram, but Facebook is what really works for me. Um, it has always worked for me. And it's just, I get probably 95% of my clients either from Facebook alone or from a combination of a referral and then they check Facebook. So tell everyone your Facebook tactics. Yeah, so I post every single day, at least once, if not twice, if the post is going really well, I leave it alone because if I post again, then it's going to compete with itself and for space in the newsfeed. If it doesn't go so well in the morning, then I'll post again at night. Um, I like using my Facebook business page because I can look at the insights and I can see when my people are online and post at that time. So I can use that as a strategy. And I also do live videos. Live videos have been huge for me on Facebook. Do you ever use your personal page? I'll share my business stuff over to my personal page. Yes. Yep. But not everything. Some of it. <laughs> the ones that the ones seem that are to have a lot of interaction. Yes. And I'll share my lives over there too, because I tend to get interaction with that over on my personal page. Yep. I think the, the, you know what I say, the personal page is so powerful. Yep. You know, the business page is powerful too. I mean, I broadcast this now on my business page, but I used to broadcast it on my personal page until yeah. it got to be more well known um, right. start but i also think it's important that i put myself out there like in my community as well so you what know? do you do in your community i tend i was volunteering on women to watch in western mass i tend to i try to go out and go to events in the community if there's like there was like a handbag bingo at the polish club i went to that and just things where there are other people that could be my potential clients so try to, I, I try to be more involved in my local community because that's where I want to get my clients from. So, yeah, and that's it's one of the things I push a lot of people for. You know, we all get used to working behind our computers and on Facebook mm -hmm. and on Instagram, and it's like really hard to 
sometimes get out of the house and do local things. But when you do, one of my one of my clients from my group that just ended messaged me today and she said, thank you for pushing me to get out. I went to two events this week. I made, I think she said three connections. And that's, people aren't gonna hire you if they don't know you exist. You can't just build a website and go, oh, they'll find my website. It just doesn't work. Everybody does not work. You build so, it, not come. <laughs> you say that again? You know the whole, if you build it, they will come. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you build it, they will not come. No. You have to make them come to invite them. <laughs> so Stephanie wants to know how often are you on Facebook Live? Yep. So when I first started doing Facebook, I made a commitment to do Facebook Live five days a week. So I did that for a long time. And but my Facebook lives are short. I did a little bit of research and I some of the Facebook, I did a little bit of research. I did short little two, three minute videos, lives. And then I did longer, like 10, 15 minute lives. And for the people that follow me, I was better off with the short ones. They had more reach, more engagement, more people watching. So that's what worked for me. So five days is not that hard if you're only going on two, three minutes and just sharing a quick tip. Base. So I'll share a tip, tell them what's going on a little bit and then do a call to action. And then I'm done. That's it. But now I'm not doing five days a week if I'm being honest. <laughs> now I'm, I have to, I try to do twice a week is what I do. So. And I and you know I always say just commit to what you actually can do. And I've made that mistake. I I was going live every day in my Facebook group, and I, I just can't anymore go live every single day. Right. So it's okay to change. I was doing blogs every week, and then we went to every other week. And yeah. now we're once a month because there's so much content out there now anyway. Yeah. And part of what you should be doing now, everybody, when you're looking at your 2020 is saying, what has brought me paying business or grown my following, right? Those are the two things I, you know, I coach other coaches as well. And some of them, they're like, they just come out with, I want to do this and it's going to be successful. And I look at their following and I'm like, you need to build your following while you're developing this content and trying to put yourself out there because building your following is the number one most important thing. So you have people to connect with and it's the same for interior designers. Right. Right. It's long. It's a long, I mean, you can't go live on Facebook for two weeks and think, Oh, I didn't grow. I mean, it's a long game. It's not a quick fix. It's, you know, it took me a couple of years. And like I was saying to before, it's not about, I don't have, I think I have maybe 3,800 on my Facebook page now. That's a lot. But it's not a huge, you know, huge following, but I would rather have a quality of follower, people that are going to recommend me to other people or people that are going to hire me than just have people liking my page. Right. And I never worry about unfollows because unfollows or unsubscribes on my email list because that means they'll never hire me anyway. And I'm good. Right. Make, make space for the people who feel I'm giving them value and let the other things go. Look at what Stephanie said. What'd she say? I can't. I still see how often are you on Facebook Live? Oh, OK. I don't know why you're seeing that delay. I'm thinking like once a month for 45 seconds. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that would work. That would be so much easier. And I have a week for 45 seconds. Do that. I I like the two minute thing. I go longer. Um, I go longer in my group. Right. And honestly, the audience. Yeah. I haven't gone live on my Facebook business page in forever. I haven't seen you in a while, Nancy. <laughs> no, I'm in my group. I, I mean, know. like. To those me, are people. those are my people and we're shooting, we're at like 4,700 now. So that's pretty good. I'm shooting for 5,000 by the end of the year. So if you're not in the interior design business form, get in there. Um, but what is dollar dollar? I don't know what you're talking about. Seems excessive. What, you, what is excessive? And then she puts these faces. <laughs> Can I put this one up? Sarah Allen said all my projects had come from local events. Yes. That happens to a lot of designers. I, I have a client um, who's more of a senior designer and experienced and the social media crap is so stressing her out. Yeah. And I'm like, no. in 40 years or 35 years, where has your business come from? 
And she said like, friends, family, local. And I'm like, so why are you stressing out about having to do all this stuff? And it's literally locking her up where she's immobilized. Yeah, you gotta focus on where you're getting your business from. Right, right. That's like Darla is always talking about Instagram because that's where she gets her business from. But I have <laughs> never gotten a client from Instagram. So I'm gonna focus on Facebook. And who, the woman you're talking about should be focusing on local. You got to find where your people are and focus on that. And that sometimes it gets, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of Facebook groups and there's a lot of uh, other designers that are giving out advice and your family and your friends. And you got to zone in, focus, and work on what you're getting business from. I mean, we're in business, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing here. What? <coughs> Excuse me. I'll take a sip of wine. Hold on. That's yes, a good time. One of the things that's a really good idea for this time of year is look back at your income and start saying, where did most of it come from? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you start to notice, and I've done it myself even, I've put a tremendous amount of energy into something that when I add it up, it's like $4,000 for the whole year. And I'm like, wow, but I was like thinking that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. But when I started to analyze like what is the, where is the bulk of my income coming from? That's really what people want you for. And right. that's where you should start to focus more time. Yep. And that's why working with you too, I can figure, I figured out my numbers. That is the main major thing. <laughs> I figured out what my numbers are, what numbers I needed to know, what they mean, what money I'm making, all that stuff that is scary to learn and actually not that hard <laughs> to work. Thank you. Thank you. Every, everybody, I, literally, I think I'm going to say a hundred percent of when people come to me, I'm like, do you know how much you've made so far this year? Kind of. <laughs> that was my answer. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, I could tell you how much is in my bank account. Um, but you don't always know like how many jobs you've had. Right. You know, where that income has come from, where those leads came from. These right. are all statistics that you should be, be tracking. Yep. Um, and good. did it help you meeting with Megan? Yes. Yep. And I have that whole form. I can plug in my numbers and play with them a little bit and figure out my markup and my margins. <laughs> and I have the separate bank accounts, you know, one for operating expenses, one for profit, one for taxes, and one for money that I owe to other people, owe to vendors. That's yes. what you call it. You call it something else. Right. Um, pass through. Yes. Pass through. Oh, that's what I call it. <laughs> but. So everyone's heard of Profit First, I think, okay. maybe. If you haven't, it's a book. It's very detailed. It's like seven bank accounts. I found it to be fabulous in its overall goal. It's really not... I don't call it an accounting system. I call it the psychological system that every business owner needs to understand where their money is and how much they can spend and how much they can't spend. Um, and so I worked with a profit first professional and came up with a version of that formula and called it down to something I think is more manageable for interior designers. And quite frankly, for myself, I use it for myself. Yeah. Um, and that's how I started. I was like, I'm not doing seven bank accounts, but let me like figure out how I can do this where it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. And then when my one-on-one -on -one clients are ready, I give them a session with um, Megan, who's the sub coach in my company that they, she goes over their numbers in even more detail than I can go over them and gives you some spreadsheets to take you forward. Yeah. And she's also very non-intimidating. Is that a word? Non-intimidating? Yeah. She's very relaxed and yeah. low key. And I just spoke to her yesterday about a couple of my clients. Um, I'm just going to go back to some comments here to catch up. See, Darla, I know she does, but so that's why she should be focusing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. All right. Sharon's comment is long. It's going to cover our faces. Okay. Also, I think how you resonate best with your clients. I feel like I play off of being in front of people and being able to visually see reactions, read the room. Absolutely. Um, so because of that, I think local makes the most sense for me. I, I, that's a great example. Yeah. When I was working with my business strategist, one of the things she's like, where are you most effective? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. But like, it's, it's when people see me talking. Right. Right. 
And yeah. I think that's the same for you, Wendy. That's why video is better than just posting a picture on Facebook. People can get to know you. And that's why I have videos on my website as well. I love your website and everybody loves your website. One of the first things they say to me is, you know, you know, I, I, I want my website to look like Wendy's. I'm like, well, don't copy it exactly. <laughs> no, well, I did, I did it. I have a web guy, but I, I tell him exactly what to put where. But when I started working with you, we narrow, I had way too many services. It was too, it was messy. It was confusing to potential clients. So we cleaned it up, narrowed in, you know, and, chose i'm trying to think how many services i have now four or five but simplified yeah but they do you have four or five they are simplified and they all start with consultation or free phone call then a consultation yeah and then it's either full service design on call design which is details on demand yes yep or i do have online design as well but but you just added that right service. Yeah, I had it a long time ago and then I decided to just put it aside because I didn't have a lot of requests for it. But I think now I had somebody that lives out in St. Louis that had asked me. And so I sent her the information for that. But I also think it'll be good for clients who can't necessarily afford full service and they just want a plan, even if they're local, they can still, it's basically like ordering a plan, but it's an online design. I'm not installing it for them. So. But one of the things that we talked about, and I don't know if you remember or whether I talked to someone else about it. I don't know. It's like you can have these other service models in the background and you use my Doma, which is fabulous. Yes. You can have a my Doma link. Like if you're talking to someone and you find out they don't have the investment level that you want to do full service design or even design or call or design for a day, um, you can say, well, I don't show it on my website, but I also do have, so you don't, have to have everything on your website you can have it in your arsenal and i'd say if you go six months and something isn't being clicked on on your website and you're right. getting traffic on your website you have to check that right it may be something you take off because it may be that again your website's getting too many service models yeah. online design is not on my website i was going to say i don't it's see it but on my my doma so i can send them the link to that package but it's not on my website because I want them to buy full service. <laughs> That's what I want them to buy. So let's offer them full service. And then don't offer anything else until they say they can't do full service. Oh, really? Like that, I'm not going to offer you that. I mean, it's if I'm at a consultation, I am going to 90% of the time say to them, I think that full service design would work for you. But if we go through the consult and I feel them out and they just need a little bit of help with this, a little bit of help with that. Then I'm offering them the details on the band, which is like an hourly, but they buy a block of hours. Right. That's what I call just, what do I call that? Designer on call. I call it designer on call. Yep. My brain is fried. Let's look at what Virginia is saying. Yes. I'm reflecting now. Yes. Reflect now. Now's the time before the new year starts. Um, wow. Four bank accounts. How do you keep from paying a service fee for them? I guess you keep it all in the same bank. So they took, well, yes and no. What does your bank do, Wendy? If I have enough money in there, they don't charge me a service fee. So I keep enough money in my account so that there's not a service fee. On each account or mm -hmm. overall? No, on each account. Okay. So I have a list of banks that tend to be in a lot of credit unions are very easy with this. You can literally have $5 in each account. My bank has a minimum also. And I look at it like, you know what, if I go below it, they charge me $35 or $25 for the month. I don't go below it. But if there was like a business emergency and I needed the money, like I have it there. But I also look at like, okay, I'm being forced to keep $1,500 minimum in certain accounts. Right. And that's good because then I don't spend it or I don't hire someone else or I don't, you know, like that's. Agreed. Right. Yep. Yeah. So shop around for the right bank that doesn't charge you. Right. I just got too lazy. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to switch all my in interactions with all my programs. It it's a pain in the neck, yep. but you can do that. Um, Danielle. Yeah. I asked, they wouldn't waive it, but I tried. I even threatened to leave. It's literally me and all my kids, all my business bank accounts, all my personal accounts and all my kids accounts. And they were willing to let me walk out the door because they just wouldn't waive the minimum. 
So at some point I'm going to do this. To me, it was worth it because I was stressing out about, oh my gosh, I still owe $6,000 for that furniture. Is that in the bank account? You know, I don't want to have to think about that anymore. I don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. and be wondering. So I know now what's in each account. I know the money is set aside for that. I know I have money for my taxes, all of it. I'm not, to me, I'd rather, even if I had a fee, I'd rather pay the fee and have a good night's sleep. Definitely. I wake up in the morning, you know, every morning, well, maybe every morning and I glance and I go, okay. Yeah. Right. I see my taxes accumulating, knowing, and maybe I'm overestimating my taxes, but like, what did I do? I thought it's great. Cause when my accountant charges me his fee, if I have extra in that account, like, yay. And if I, if, if once it should be like close to just one month's worth, I can always bring it into my operating expense. Yeah, it's just such a great system to understand as creatives, we're not accountants. This is a way of managing your business and understanding like where you really stand financially. Yeah. Um, so what's Kristen saying? She's trying to change her clientele. Currently I get clients from website. That's good. Contractor referrals. That's even better. Yeah. Friends referrals, network referrals. How do I change to get clients that are more willing to pay for quality? Oh, I know. Go ahead. Answer up your hourly rate. Thank you. <laughs> because it works. Listen, I had people telling me that, and before I worked with Nancy, even, and then Nancy's like, "You're upping your rate, and that is it. Like, what is the worst that's going to happen?" And it is. It's really scary because you think people are going to hire you, but somehow it's like this little miracle that when you up your hourly rate, your clients get better. I gave this example today and I don't know if it's, it, it applies in my head. This is a good analogy. I don't know if everyone will agree. And maybe, maybe you've heard me say it before, but if you were going for a facelift to a plastic surgeon, you called three plastic surgeons and what two of them were free consults and one charge, you know, $300. You might book with the free ones, but then is that going to gnaw at you that you're going for a facelift and you're not going to the person who's able to charge $300? I would cancel the free ones and go, you know what, for $300, I want the best. Right. So there's a psychological thing about this, everyone. And it, it really does work. And as you up your rates, the universe works in mysterious ways. When you tell somebody, well, first of all, that's a whole conversation unto itself. But when you tell somebody how much your consult fee is, and I see a question about free phone call, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And they say no. Remember, that's just opening up space for the right person and for you to do your marketing and connect with the higher level people. Right. And it works. It, it works. But, but it all starts with you putting yourself out there in some way. You, have, you can't yeah. just sit behind your computer and do nothing. No. No. You have to be out there talking to everybody about what you do all the time personal like and i hear this but i don't want to talk to my friends about it. i'm like Glenn, no don't chew their ear off but like when yeah, you walk into a party like i'm going to a or like a get together tonight with a bunch of ladies that i get together with usually once a month when i walk in they're going to be like how are you i'm going to be like oh my god so good <laughs> now now i'm doing this but i'm not going to like talk about it all night all and right. that that usually go you know god i know somebody who could use you yep yep they can refer you to somebody else but the, even People don't understand what we do. Even I have like my close friends, I'll say to them, oh, you know, I was um, just designing a sofa and choosing the fabric and the contrasting well, and the leggings, they were like, you do that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they don't know. So if you just saying it in conversation, just saying, oh, you know, I went shopping with a client or if you do that, or, you know, I was working on a floor plan. People, they don't know what you're doing. They don't know. And when you say I'm an interior designer, they don't know exactly what you do. They just don't. They don't. And when I was doing art consulting, there was a time I was talking to my sister and I said, oh, my God, I'm doing this family photo wall for somebody. And that's exactly word for word what you just said. She's like, I didn't know you did family photo walls, but that's not art. I'm like, yeah, but I'm art framing and accessories. That's framing. That's putting a, a wall together. She's like, my sister-in-law needs you. Like she's been talking about wanting to do a family photo wall. So two examples, everyone of just talking about what you do and it turning into, you know, potential clients. And this is how they're going to think of you 
like if someone now tomorrow is talking to them about, you know, I got to do my bathroom over or I have to do this over, but I don't know who to call. Oh, I was just talking to someone yesterday who does that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what is Sarah asking? Can we talk about your free phone call? They always turn into full consults for me. So I had to stop them. Stop the free phone call. You have to, she needs your script. Sarah. <laughs> Remove your script. <laughs> we haven't gone over the desire sales formula yet, Sarah. So basically, you're going to free phone call them into paid consult. Um, paid consult, you know, someone asked me today, well, but then they start asking me, well, if I work with you, what's your hourly rate? I don't know if you do what I tell you. Consult. Say that again. So we'll talk about that at the end of your consultation. Wendy is literally the best student ever. <laughs> Because it made it so easy for me. I have a paper that has the script. It's in the client folder. I open it up when I have the phone call. It's simple questions and just steering them in the right direction. Don't get sucked in to all their questions. I'm done. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm leaving. It's, all, it's the Wendy show. No, but Wendy's right. This is exactly what, you know, you absorbed a lot of what I told you. Like, don't let people take you down the rabbit hole of, well, if I work with you, how do exactly do you work? And what's your mock-up? And what's your hourly? And how many hours do you think it's going to be? And how much do you think I need to spend? Excuse me. This is a freaking phone call. Right. All you want to do is get them into the paid consult. And all that will be discussed at that time. So, Sarah, I'm not sure we answered your question, but you should be getting on the phone if your pipeline is not full. I have dealt with a lot of people with like, well, I, you know, I make them go to my website or I don't get on the phone. And if you're not getting on the phone, there's some kind of anxiety around getting on the phone and not knowing what to say. And that's what I teach. So yeah. um, that was super helpful. That just that phone call worksheet. Like the desire sales formula. Uh, yes. Yeah. It just says it's one sheet of paper. It says it. I take it out. I put it inside their folder. I, I write while I'm on the phone with them. So it, have your script, write yeah. it out in your, and you know, I, somebody recorded me today doing it and she just wants to re-listen to it. And then I said, then turn it off and practice your version of it. Just make sure you hit all the points. Um, Dollar plugged your designer for a day on next Wednesday. Oh, thank you on Wingnut socials, uh, podcast, uh, Thanks, Dala. Um, then I'm, I'm behind on these. Oh, boy, I can't see them. So, perspective. Uh, uh, Danielle is saying perspective. Love it. It's true. Everything's about perspective. Everything's about the way you look at a situation. Yeah. If you're gonna twist yourself into a pretzel every time a client says no to you, or twist yourself into a pretzel after ever time you maybe don't handle that phone call perfectly. Right. You can't. I mean. I get that because when you don't have a full pipeline, you really are wanting those clients. But it kind of dawned on me that if they're not hiring me because I'm too expensive, then they were going to be a real pain anyway. So I don't want to work with them. So if they say no, it does kind of still hurt a little bit at first because you want the job. But I have come to realize that it leaves room for the better job, you know? But it, I mean, it does thing. It's hard not to take it personally, but not everybody should even be working with any interior designer. It's not for everybody. And the people that want to be shopping and doing things on their own and this and that, I, I don't want to work with those people anymore. Not to be mean, but. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. You know what? And you put, you're like me, you put plenty of content out there. If they want to just go learn it on their own and spend the time learning it and then spend the time doing it. People, and I say this all the time, I'm going to say it again, people don't hire you for information, they hire you for implementation. Your ideal client hires you to implement. Yep. So share, share, share. If they want to comb the internet or your Facebook page and stalk you and put all the little pieces together and do it themselves. Go ahead. Exactly. Go ahead. You don't so, want to work with them anyway because they'll drive you bananas. Those are the people that drive you bananas. I figured out how to see the comments. It's very oh, awesome. good. Okay. So Virginia, my networking group thinks I ought to be only offering my service called occupied stage and using what they have and not bringing in furniture. I frequently get calls for the vacant staging, but frequently lose the bid. There's a lot in there. Okay. I don't know if you're a networking group or a group of stagers or designers, but I'd say that's the first thing. Like 
occupied staging. I don't think that's a bad idea. You could do six hours in their house, charge properly for it, rearrange, put things away. If you want to do that, um, just charge a premium for it. Right. If you want to do it. Um, but how is she making, it goes back to that. How is she making money? Like, what are you making money on? It doesn't hourly. matter what the working group says. I would, I would think hourly. Um, Maybe she doesn't want to lug the stuff around anymore and having furniture and all that. That's you know, a lot of designers are coming to me now saying, I don't want to do full service anymore because it's too hard. So just make what you offer so valuable and charge up mm -hmm. and promote it well and you'll get business and make all your money from hourly. It, it's just, what do you want to do is really the first question you have to answer. So let me see what uh, Danielle is saying. Also with the tax account, you begin invest with your funds better. Oh, good idea. It is a win-win. That's right. Okay, what am I up to? Bang on the money, Wendy. <laughs> I should be keeping up so I know what everyone's talking about. Um, if you can't talk to friends and family, don't think you can magically talk to perfect strangers. Yeah, practice. practice on your friends and family. Yes. I will say that like narrowing down and really simplifying and zoning in on your website and on your services helps you be able to talk to people about it. When things are organized and simplified on your website and your services, they're easier to talk about. It's not so much. Yeah, if now's the time to really hammer out your ladder of services. What exactly do you want to offer? And then what do you call it? How do you describe it? And who is it perfect for? Those yep. are the three things you really want to know. And you want to hammer it out until you go, oh my God, that's it. And now mm -hmm. it can roll off my tongue because that's exactly what I do. And and it's you get this clarity. Right. And make it sound like you. Like I worked really hard when I was working with you on making making my website feel and sound like me as well. That's so. the branding. That's the branding. Okay. In your opinion, how many service options are too many? I'll let you go first and then I'll tell them. In my opinion, no. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I really only want to offer full service. I mean, I offer consultation, but I don't think that's, I guess it is a service. So consultations, full service, and then on details on demand, which is by the hour. That's really all I want to offer. And, and I would just add, so to me, a consult is the first step into your service model. Right, so right. I would say, I'd say consult is a given, paid, 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 paid consult, not free. Yeah and then three service models. To me, anything more than three, I listen, I'm gonna tell you what makes me bounce off. And if I go to somebody's website and I have to choose between too many things, I'm done. Because I think they have a confused brain and they're trying to serve everybody and I don't wanna work with a person like that. Right, but they're also, people going to your website are most likely already overwhelmed with their project that they have coming, whether it's building or renovating or furnishing or decorating, they're already overwhelmed. So if they go to your website and that's overwhelming too, it's too much. Yeah, they're hiring you to help them make decisions, not that they're going, do you like this? So do you like that? Or do you like this? So what do you think? I wanna make sure it's your home that you love it. If you say that too many times and don't kind of like interject that's why you hired me. I'm telling you, this is going to look fabulous. Please trust me. Yep. The kiss of death. The kiss kiss of death. Trust me. Um, well, no, so, but I really think that. They're already overwhelmed. They just want you to tell them what they need. That's it. I'm a newbie to the folder. I can't wait to read this. Wow. <laughs> I think she's talking about my membership site. Okay. Um, awesome. Okay, Virginia, we're covering Wendy's and half of my face too. I finally added my prices. On, no, 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 no. What did you say? I finally added my prices on my website for my services back to services. I don't want to limit myself to only occupied staging, but now consultations, main art income, and one realtor uses me um, who has all of her inventory. Ideal. What are your thoughts? I love doing anything related to beautifying a property. Unless your pipeline is full, don't put your prices on your website. That's the first thing. My thought is that, and I told Virginia this already at High Point Market, that she needs to hire you. Say that <laughs> again? 
I think she needs to work with you because she's struggling a little bit and she's kind of going around and not knowing exactly what the best thing is for her. So if she works with you or someone as a business coach, it helps you zone in and figure those things out. And then you're not wasting your time on things that aren't working for you and things that aren't important. Okay. But you know what I find? Um, the biggest, one of the biggest issues are just like when someone hires you for one time and they think, it, you know, they're going to, the light bulb is going to go off and they're going to have the consistency. Part of the, beauty of coaching, but expensive. I'm, I'm honest. It's expensive is the accountability. Like you have someone to look at. Now I added weekly check-ins also with my one-on-one -on -one clients as a group weekly check in right. And it's like, what are you getting done by next week? What are you getting done by next week? And I remember that question. I'm like, um, and then it would be, you know, a few days before and I'm like, Oh shoot, I didn't do that thing yet. So it does, it makes you do whatever you're supposed to be doing. Right. And, and I mean, yeah, it is expensive, but you know what? that made me want to get the most out of it. Like, I'm not going to come back and be like, well, I didn't do that. And I just paid you for a month. That, it's, yeah, so. There's also a psychology about paying. Mm -hmm. Like when you go into someone's home for a free consult, they're listening, they're not paying a half attention, but if they paid you a large sum of money, they damn well be taking notes. And it is the same for coaching. Right, that psychology about actually investing in yourself and not letting yourself not do it because that would just be silly and a waste of money. Um, okay, good. I'm glad you're going to do the script. Dollar said yes, but I'm not sure about what because I'm behind. And oh. <laughs> I'm scrolling too. Oh, now we're completely covered, Kristen. I used to be in a networking group of all women in their own businesses. I recently started getting requests from them to do rooms for them. Recently, I decided to stop taking clients who are going to nickel and dime me. Yay. I understand budgets may be low and they need me, but I can't do that anymore. Do I turn down someone who is part of my networking group who might then refer me to better clients? I keep getting referrals to people that are not going to help me get to the next level. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to uncover our faces though. You never know who people know. Right. I, I, so one, no, you should not do any job that is not going to be profitable. You have to protect your profit. You're the only one who will. You don't take the job unless it's profitable for you. Um, unless you're a brand new baby designer and you're doing a couple of things in exchange for payment by testimonial, payment by pictures. You're still getting paid. You're just getting paid in a different way. Um, just to get your portfolio going, sometimes that is a good idea. But I would know, I would not take jobs just because they're in the networking group. You took a cheap job. Now you they spread the word. Guess what? She does design for like $85 an hour. So but what if those people in that networking group were to buy a block of hours instead and say, I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't do it. Though. I don't know how she was doing it, but I don't do it that way anymore. Now I have a minimum of 20 hours. So you can buy a block of 20 hours because that will weed out the people first of all. And second of all, those, if, if it doesn't weed them out and they're still wanting to hire her, then they'll be more focused when they're working together because they have that block of hours and they don't want to use it up doing things that aren't useful. Yeah. Have a minimum and have a minimum that's has to be used within a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it's 10 hours it has to be used within two weeks or a month, whatever you decide you're the CEO of your business, but I would never sell 10 hours or recommend anyone sell 10 hours without a 30 day. Like it must be used within 30 days or you lose it. 20 hours has to be used within two months. Some yep. of my clients have wavered on that because of different situations and I'm fine with that, but just make sure you put that time lock on it. Full service is a beast. <laughs> Best beast. Yeah. She's, she's beast. True. Um, Okay, dollar, they're at, they're talking amongst themselves. Uh, <laughs> please check my website, my services page, and give me your opinions if I'm offering service. We can't do that live, Virginia. We'd have to check everybody's. <laughs> um, but Virginia is the sweetest. I know. I've worked with her in the past. You know what, Virginia? You should go into a couple of the groups, mine included, and just say, hey, I'd love people to weigh in on my website. I find... When I can't be in the group, like 
everyone's helping each other constantly and I love it. Yeah. I, so I would recommend that to you, Virginia, to get other people's opinions if you want. Um, if I'm able to get in there, tag me, I'll give you a quick and dirty on it as well. It's, but it's, well, there's a matter of too many opinions and then there's a matter of if you see a pattern. Yeah, because sometimes you put something out in the group and then you have 10 different opinions and you're back where you started. That's my opinion with the group, <laughs> with any group. It's just. It is. It's true. And this is part of why when people coach with me, I say, just do me a favor. Just like while you're coaching with me, you know what I say. <laughs> yeah. Stop listening to everyone else. Just give me six months. Like, yeah. because while you're listening to every other coach and every other podcast and everything, like they're going to be there when you stop coaching with me. But what happens is half our sessions end up going to, well, I heard this one designer does it this way and maybe I should do it that way. And we use up the time rather than you're making progress. We're talking about all the shiny objects that you're chasing. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, the Facebook groups are amazing and they're great, but sometimes it does, it's a lot of noise. Like I was saying before, it's a lot of noise and you have to know who to listen to. So if you're yeah. hiring somebody, then listen to that person. But sometimes you post something in a group and you really actually already know the answer. So when someone answers, you're like, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But that's what people want. They need, Right. You work in a bubble sometimes. So it's nice to. Right. Right. It's a validation of what you already knew. So that's a good thing too. Yes. Yeah. Um, Michelle, should you include the price of your consultation on your website to weed out the wrong clients? We're going to have differing opinions on that. <laughs> yes, we are. My opinion is if you have a full pipeline, yes, that's when you put up your price of your consult and maybe a little bit of a questionnaire. But if you don't have a full pipeline, I want you to be able to get on the phone, talk them through the desire sales formula, this series of questions you ask, to get them into that paid consult. Um, that's my opinion. What's yours? That's true. But I, I, I can't remember because I've gone back and forth so many times. So I don't, I couldn't tell you if it's on my website right now or not. It has been, it hasn't been. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But <laughs> for me, uh, weeded out people. It was a lot of phone calls from people who were never going to pay my consult fee. So for me, it weeded that out. Yes. And I, again, wow. because you're getting a lot of phone calls. Right. So that makes sense that if you're, if your pipeline is not full, then yes, you want a chance to talk to them and try to reel them in, so to speak. Uh, yes. It says consults are $3.99 for up to 90 minutes. Yep. Book your consult. But again, you get a lot of, you get a lot of inquiries at this point. Right. So to me, any even in coaching, it was like, I didn't put it up in the beginning. I was like, hop on the phone with me for free. Talk to them. What's your problem? Why is this important to you? This is what I can do for you. Right. Uh, I do charge for that. I can book you next Tuesday. Awesome. I can't wait to work with you. That's my desire sales formula in a really quick nutshell. Mm -hmm. And you do that on the design side. If you have a person who just gets turned off by seeing your price and you didn't get to convince them to do the consult, you might be missing out on someone who actually has a lot of money. So once your pipeline is full, say, say that again. I'm going to go back and take it off. I'll take it off, put it back, take it off. No, your pipeline is full. It is. It is right now. But but you make a good point. <laughs> You're missing my point. If your pipeline is full, I put know. your price on there. But it's still a good point that I, I still want to book people for next year. So if they're seeing really? that. Nothing wrong with having a waiting list. No, I have one. I have two people on my waiting list. So let's see that. that. Nothing wrong with saying I'm not available till January 15th. Yep. People who are your ideal client and it's not urgent will wait. If they're urgent and they have to go to someone else, okay. It doesn't mean you should turn your life upside down just to take them and then ruin your life for them. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. It's not worth it. I know. No. Paid consult. Plus, really nice if you get that money. Well, because you charge in advance, otherwise you don't go. Yep. Charge paid all through my DOMA. Easy. Yep. yep. All charge and paid. I get a lot of color consultation and people really expect that to be free. Why? I don't accept that, but like to get some tips for color consultations for 
um, you shouldn't be going out for free. No. You give, you're giving them value. Um, if you're going to do it virtually, you should still get money for it, <laughs> right? Any consult, yes. Well, that was one of the things when we started working together, I had a bunch of different consultations. Hi, Debbie. I, I, had, I had a paint consult, I had a staging consult, I had a regular consult, and why? I, now I have one consultation, it's the same price. You spend that 90 minutes picking paint colors, you can spend that 90 minutes getting staging advice, or you can spend that 90 minutes doing design, any of those. And, and I think that's where, when we talked about culling down and other people's websites have, I do a color consult, I do, you know, restaging and I do, yeah. I don't know, there's so many out there. It's like, you know, just artwork and just window treatments and just this and just that. Guess what? All those, if they fit into six hours, then they're designing for a day. If all those fit right. into your two hour consult or your 90 minute consult, then when they call and say that's what they want and will you write, this is perfect for you if, yep. list out those things, which I think is what you do. Um, that was exactly it. This service is perfect for you if. Just like you told me. <laughs> Just like I told you. Is your consultation rate higher or lower than your hourly? It's supposed to be 2.5 times your hourly. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Like, Wendy's giving me all time. my secrets. Jake. <laughs> it depends actually based on your experience. Sometimes I do 2.25 and it, it's not just based on your experience. When I'm working with people on video, I can tell a little bit better. I can actually tell a lot whether they're ready to raise their rates or or they're going to confidently be able to ask for a certain rate. So in the beginning, I told you to raise your rate, but then as you got more confident in when we were working together, yep. every time. <laughs> Going up again. I know my consult right now is not 2.5 times my hourly rate, but it needs to go up. But it has been going up. I'm a little off. It's getting there. <laughs> So yes, Sarah, it's higher than your hourly rate. Um, yes. Virginia, please explain further what pipeline is full looks like, getting calls or getting clients? Getting clients. It means having a paid client who made their deposit and they're working with you. Yeah. Yeah. Full pipeline does not mean you can attend. What? You want to be getting calls too, obviously, but you need to be turning them into clients so that your pipeline is full. Um, what's your closing rate at this point after learning the desired sales formula from call to paid consult? I think I've only, you want me to percentage? I've only had one person that called that didn't book a consult out of, let me think, just for the past month, five inquiries and four booked consults. So what's my percentage? I don't know. <laughs> I know exactly. Hold on. <laughs> You need a calculator. 80%. Yay. 80%. Yeah. Um, I don't do it for free at all, but they always ask me, why is it not free? Oh, yeah. Because it's a working meeting. It's not just a consult. It's the first step in the design process, and, and you are giving value that is going to save them time, money, and mistakes moving forward. Yep. That's the answer. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm assuming tons of tips and ideas while you're there. You're not just going to look at the job. You're because people are used to that with contractors, a free person. Like my husband is an excavation contractor. He goes to the jobs for free, but he's not doing any of the work for free. When we go as a designer, we're doing work while we're there. We're telling you, this is your furniture arrangement. Do these for your draperies, this color for your wall. You're giving them your intellectual property. And I think we get, I, I do get that a lot where designers come to me and they do can't compare themselves to contractors mm -hmm. or even landscape designers. Well, they come for free and they talk to you. We're trying to change the industry, everybody. We're trying to change the way, the value of a designer. And I don't want you to compare yourself to any other industry. I just want you to compare yourself to what you need to make a living to be happy with what you do, to live, you know, have a profitable business. Um, because if you're doing so much for free, you're, you have a hobby. Right. Right. 
So yes, Debbie, we need to get paid. We don't work for free, whether design consult or a paint consult. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just flying through. We're at the end here. Do you believe it? Okay, hold on. Oh my goodness gracious. There's a lot of comments. Going to be interviewing Sandra Funk and she does not charge for consults. She has a whole theory on it. So what are your thoughts reference to free consults? There is a certain point where you get to with extremely high level clients. So a couple of my one-on-one -on -one clients, interior designers who work with me, I have said, you are a free consult person because you are now at the level, you're doing $3.5, $4 million a year, you're really high level clients and not gonna wanna hear, I charge three fifty dollars for a consult. Right. But when you get those jobs, you're also possibly a flat fee at that point, flat fee design, from design to all the way to the um, finishing touches. So I'm not cookie cutter coaching, but there's a level which if you're taking small jobs, even if you do a free consult and you're only buying $10,000 worth of furniture for them and your margin is only 30%, yep. this is not worth your time. But once you get to those 500,000 to million dollar clients, or let's call it 250 to 500,000, sometimes you have to reevaluate your business model. So right. it's not the same for new designers. Designers who are starting to get up to the next level and then really high end designers. I have quite a few clients who are on a square footage cost but it's high and it, they don't want to hear like, well, the delivery and the white glove and the, and the receiver, right. they just want, how much is it going to cost me? And I'm just going to pay you to handle it all. So yeah. there's different models, payment models, billing models for different levels. Did I answer your question, Dollar? Well, I okay. also think for the consults, for those people, you're not going in and saying, Let's talk about your furniture arrangement. Maybe you should do this with window treatments. You're actually going just to look at the job. Right. So it's not giving. I could be wrong. Sandra could tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, but no, I'd like to hear what Sandra has to say. You're not giving that information. Right. But that's part of the problem is when someone hears somebody on a podcast who is already there. Right. Or maybe they did just jump right up to there because of the circles they live in or walk in or grew up in. It, there's so many factors, everyone. When you're listening to a really successful designer on a podcast or in a group, just or you're looking at their stock in their website, just keep it in mind that you don't know how they started. You don't know how long it took them to get there. You don't know what circles they walk in naturally because they grew up in certain. You, know, you just don't know a lot. So Where they live. I mean, I think that plays a part. For me, that does. Because I don't, I live out in the middle of nowhere. There aren't very many million dollar homes around here. <laughs> so it's not that, it's a different type of clientele. It, it, well, you have to drive a mile to get to your mailbox. <laughs> I do. <laughs> We were talking about that earlier because my my car was dead in my garage and I had to get it, you know, anyway. A AAA came and blah, blah, blah. I went to the garage and they said, there's nothing wrong with this car. You're just not driving it enough. And I'm like, I drive. I just don't drive that much. And Wendy's like, I had to drive a mile, seriously, a mile to my yeah. mailbox. I'm like, I drive a mile to Dairy Barn and back combined, half a mile each way. I know. People say that to me. Why do you listen to podcasts? I'm like, because it takes me 20 minutes to get to the grocery store. <laughs> back. It's a whole podcast. So funny. All right. I We got off on all kinds of coaching tangents, which I love to do. And thank you for doing that with me. I can't get to everyone's comments, but oh, why did I leave up the 0%? Um, tell everyone what you're doing now uh, with Debbie. At the, tell, them, tell them what you're doing. Okay. So, um, Debbie Daly, who's on here, I think she was, and Marianne Cherico, and I have formed the Design for Today Collaborative. So we started out just teaching local workshops to interior designers and home stagers on a variety of topics. We did one that was on contracts and packaging your sales, packaging your services and selling your services. Um, and we have one coming up next week, which is on social media and marketing and networking in person networking as well. And we also have now decided that we are going to record those and those will be available to people that aren't in the local area. Nice. That'll be next year. And we have a Facebook group called design for today collaborative. If people want to join that, but, um, Debbie Daly originally started it for, 
um, she had a lot of friends who were interior designers and they had been in the business for years and years and years and they needed to transition to what we're talking about, which is the new face of interior design. So that was why she had originally started it. And then we started teaching workshops together. So now we're all collaborating on that group as well. And it's kind of evolving as we go. So I'm doing that. And I also have one hour coaching calls that I'm doing called detail your business. Excellent. And why? Most importantly, I'm interior designing because <laughs> that's what I love to do most. So, and I, I told you in the beginning, like the third session in, just saying. You did. Okay. Just saying. I need a little credit for that. You did. 100%. You <laughs> I, said, I said, Wendy, you're going to end up coaching. She's like, no, no, not, no. I'm like, no, you are going to end up just like lean into it. <laughs> And get it done because you're good at what you do, and you're you're a good student, you're a good teacher. So um, I'm sure the other two ladies are too. I don't know them well enough yet, Debbie. We got to get to you get them and get you on here. Um, I might stop weekend wind down for a little while in 2020. What? Yeah, I'm not sure yet. People weigh in. Should I stop weekend wind down? Give me some love because I'm like, well, maybe go to like twice a month. I don't know. I like it. I don't always get on to watch it live. I like to watch it over the weekend. We get more, we get more on, we definitely get more on replay, which is fine because everyone said, why did you do Friday night at 4.30? It's the worst time slot ever. And I'm like, cause that's when I can do it and be consistent. It lives there forever. You can watch it whenever you want. Lives there forever and goes up on YouTube. Um, so, all right. Oh, everyone's going, no, no, no. See? No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, There's Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I like weekend wind down, or you could do once a month. Yeah, because I'm thinking if I do once a month, there'd be anticipation. Why do you want to stop? Because there's a lot of happy hours going on on Friday nights with my friends now. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably just more to take a little bit of a break, uh, which I do some weekends anyway because I have other things to do. Um, so, all right. Well, you're not around. No, and maybe host different topics with different hosts. Different topics with different hosts. Meaning I wouldn't be the host. It would be, I don't know how I would do that with my systems, but uh, good idea, Danielle. It's kind of like having a podcast, guest podcaster. Right? I could have a guest weekend wind down host. It's a good idea. Um, and Dollar yeah. whiskey down. Yeah, Dollar and I were trashed on her weekend wind down. Natalie made me drink whiskey with her at High Point. It was awful, <laughs> but it was worth it. So worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do another whiskey down. All right. So cheers, everyone. Have a great weekend. I'll see you, I think, next week on Weekend Wind Down. I never look in advance. Um, so cheers. Thank Thanks, Wendy, for being my guest. Everyone look up Wendy's website, detailsfullserviceinteriors.com, and all the new stuff she's up to. And join her group. Tell the name again. Design for Today Collaborative. Okay. And if you need me, nancyganzacoffer.com or in my group, the Interior Design Business Forum, where I help you charge what you're worth, become more profitable, and understand your business like a business person should. So I will talk to you all next week. Bye, guys.